Okay. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and from the Holy Spirit. Amen. So a couple months ago, I was up early and I was sitting having a cup of coffee. It was one of those days when I had a long to-do list, lots of things to do, and it seemed pretty daunting. The house was quiet and I was just enjoying my coffee and letting my mind wander, trying to get the energy up so that I could get moving. When suddenly I heard a sound that was startling. It was something like this. It was a sound I recognized, but I hadn't heard in a while. A baby starting to use their little voice to tell the world what they were thinking. But where was it coming from? Because there's no babies in my house anymore. And then I realized that I had left the door open to get some air in. And I looked out the window and there I saw dad pushing that stroller down the street. That little voice startled me and it changed the course of my day. In our gospel text this morning, we're taken back to the very beginning of Jesus' ministry in Matthew's gospel. The Beatitudes are words that are familiar, I'm sure, to all of us. And yet, as I read them this week, I couldn't escape thinking about how startling they must have been for the people who first heard them. We have Jesus' disciples there. And it's so early in Jesus' ministry that there's only four of them. If you read the text carefully, Peter and Andrew, James and John, two sets of brothers who had recently been just living their lives and fishing when they were startled by Jesus and they followed him. The crowds were there because Jesus had begun by teaching in the temple about the kingdom of God and he was healing everyone, whatever their affliction was. They were coming to Jesus to be healed. And so all of those people were startled by what this young rabbi was doing. And they left their daily responsibilities, whatever their plans were, to bring others to Jesus, to hear what he was saying, hoping that they too would be healed. And now as Jesus begins to teach, with startling words. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Even though we've heard them so many times, let's just sit with them for a second. Because they are startling. When I see pictures in the news of asylum seekers waiting at our border, I see the poor in spirit. And thinking of them as blessed can be a little hard. When I saw posts on Facebook this week from my husband's cousin marking the first anniversary of losing her young son to cancer, I struggled in that moment to think of her as blessed. And what about all those others that Jesus calls blessed? Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who are merciful, the pure in heart, the peacemakers, the persecuted, the reviled. Do we think of them as blessed? Or does it startle us? Because these are often not the people who are going to end up on top. And yet it is all of these who have received the kingdom of heaven, who will be filled, find comfort. These are the ones who will receive mercy, see God, be called children of God, and have their reward in heaven. Frederick Buchner captures the startling nature of the Beatitudes when he writes, the world says, mind your own business. And Jesus says, 
There is no such thing as your own business. The world says, follow the wisest course and be a success. And Jesus says, follow me and be crucified. The world says, drive carefully. The life you save may be your own. And Jesus says, whoever would save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. The world says law and order. And Jesus says love. The world says get. And Jesus says give. In terms of the world's sanity, Jesus is crazy as a coot. And anybody who thinks he can follow him without being a little crazy too is laboring less under a cross than under a delusion. When we think about it, following Jesus is crazy because as Buchner points out, it means that we have to put aside reality as the world creates it. It means that we have to be startled into seeing how many of the comforts and places where we put our confidence, how some of the things that we might look for as blessings are not necessarily aligned with God's vision. But when we are living in the craziness of following Jesus, things will happen. One thing that happens is we find ourselves standing on the firm foundation of God's history with humanity. We can look back and see all of the ways that God has continued to love and act in the world from the moment of creation through today. We're reminded of how many times and in how many ways the people of God have and continue to turn away putting their vision before God's. And yet through it all, God never stops calling for us to return. We can remember as we do today, those saints who are part of the history, who showed us what life in Christ looks like and encouraged us to live out that same life. I know you have all had these saints in your lives who introduced you to Jesus, who taught you how to live this life. Remember that we, when we are baptized, we are marked with the cross of Christ forever. It binds us to this history and nothing we do can ever change it. As we approached All Saints Day this week, I was thinking about my father. He passed away, oh, about 15 years ago. My father was an alcoholic my entire life. He had a few short periods when he was in recovery, but for the most part, he was drinking all the time. Despite that addiction, he managed to always keep his job because he was what they call a weekend alcoholic. He saved his drinking pretty much for the weekend. So he was able to provide us with a home and financial stability. But if any of you have ever encountered addiction, you'll know that there are always emotional scars. I hadn't fully recognized those scars in myself until I went through the candidacy process and seminary. And they were startling to me when I was forced to look at them and really understand them. And as I look where I am at where I am today, <clears throat> I see how those scars are a blessing. They're a blessing of God to me. They make me who I am and they help me because they're a source of strength in my counseling. In God's good vision, there is no addiction. But in the brokenness of this time, there is always blessing. We look around us today and we can always see those things. We just have to have our eyes open. 
My home congregation in Brewster participates in the breakfast run program. So we gather early in the morning, make a hot breakfast, and take that, usually along with donated clothing, into Manhattan. And the first time I, done, I had done it, I didn't know what to expect. And I was startled because as soon as I arrived, what I saw was a community of mutual care. There were two men who were clearly leaders who showed us how to get set up and then made sure everyone waited patiently while we did. As the men came and went through the clothing, often someone would pick something up that didn't fit them and they would call to a friend saying, hey, this looks like it's the right size for you. And there was even one who approached me and said, do you have anything for women? Because the reality is most of the homeless are men. And he said, I have a friend who's in the hospital and I'd like to bring something to her. There was blessing in that place. Part of it was the food and clothing that we brought, but it was also so much bigger than that. It was the blessing of God through the Holy Spirit, creating community that offered comfort and a place of support. Now again, this does not mean that people living on the streets is part of God's good vision. And it's something that we should never accept. It's a sin, really, that we're complicit in when we are in systems that prevent everyone from having a place to live, when God has provided enough for that to be a reality. But it was a startling reminder that God is present everywhere, and God's blessings are always flowing. Looking back, and looking around, we can see how God is always moving the world toward love and wholeness. And there's even more, because we can look ahead, taking comfort that even if God's completion comes after our time here on earth, we will see it as we pass from this world. By the world's measure, following Jesus is crazy. But because of who God is, because of what God has done and is doing, we can choose crazy. We can be startled by the words of the Beatitudes, realizing that following Jesus doesn't mean our lives will be easy, but it does mean that we will be blessed. As we celebrate All Saints Day, remembering all of the saints who have gone before us. Think about all of the saints who surround us now and know that in the great communion, when life is hard, when we struggle as God works through us, God is always blessing. And for this, we can say thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.